three, two, one. I'm the reason Grand Funk didn't completely go under. I am it. Today in the hot seat, we have Lynn Goldsmith. She has a book, Music in the 80s. I'll put links down below. And we're also going to talk about her relationship with Grand Funk. You're not going to want to miss this one, kids. Don't touch that dial. It all starts now. You know, I had Mark Farmer on the show, and he was just praising how creative and what a great photographer and just you. And he credited you for uh, American Band. Like Very the- creative. She was more of a co-manager uh, than just a publicist. She she was the one that came to us and said, you know what? You guys need to write a song about who you are. You're an American band. And they- You're the reason the song happened. I'm the reason Grand Funk didn't completely go under. I am it. I am, you know, um, I was their co-manager, whether they knew it or not. Um, I had been directing television, and there was a show called ABC in Concert. (laughs) They had uh, broken with Terry Knight which the rock press had written a lot about. And the rock press did not like Grand Funk. They did not think that Grand Funk had any uh, credibility. They were going to appear on a show I was directing in concert uh, on ABC, I, which I did with Joshua White. I said, I'd really like to, we were doing our first, it was called a special. Otherwise we did group after group, Alice Cooper, blah, blah, blah. But this was going to be the first special. And I said, well, let's, their album is called Phoenix, which I listened to. And uh, there was a thing in New York called um, Phoenix House, which was a halfway house, and it was spreading out to other states. Phoenix House was where young addicts who had come through a certain point of their addiction could enter as a halfway house that would help them then get into being productive people in society. And so I said, let's take Grand Funk to Phoenix House and do have them, because they're the same age as the kids who are in these places. And that would be a good thing for us to do. And ABC approved it. And then I met with Andy Cavalieri, who had become their manager. Now, prior to the album Phoenix, Grand Funk had released a few albums, uh, which had done extremely well. They'd always sold a million units, but they never had a single. It was always only FM radio and, you know, the longer songs, no singles. I was tired of working in network TV. It was very hard to um, get them to uh, uh, do my ideas. They had very traditional ways. And I was a young girl, you know, if it hadn't have been for Joshua White, who would fight for me, but he was actually, they had to present it like Josh would have to present it to ABC as if it was his idea. You know, they really didn't want to hear it from me. So um, when it came to uh, this situation and I met Andy who was incredibly handsome, uh, uh, I just sort of went, oh, I could spend my time around him. You know, I was in my 20s. I had previously worked at Electra Records, making short films for uh, The Doors, Delaney and Bonnie, um, uh, a range of people. Very cool. I also made the radio spots and I was the director of publicity and marketing. You, there were only 10 people there. So you had a lot that you could do. And Jack Holzman, who was um, a man who, my being female, mm-hmm. he, he just he just could hear my ideas and say, try it, right? So Andy had been Grand Funk's road manager. He knew nothing about marketing, publicity, any of those things, right? And so uh, after we did the, the, uh, the shoot, 
at Phoenix House. And I knew I didn't want to work for ABC anymore. But I had saved money as a director. And I went to uh, Andy and said, I have an idea. Uh, all these English bands are taking over and blah, blah, blah. And Grand Funk is the kind of band that the working, the working man saves up his money and on Friday night wants to go party, you know, and Grand Funk can give them a show. Uh, and they are an American band. I said, so here's what I would like to do. You get the guys to write a song called We're an American Band. I am going to get Todd Rundgren to produce it because the press loves Todd Rundgren and the press hates Grand Funk Railroad, okay? Um, and Todd will be a great producer because he doesn't put himself in there, but he can get a certain sound. He also needs money. Todd and I were really good friends. Uh, when I had first come to New York, I wrote songs and I wanted to record. And that was all at Secret Sound Studio. And that was where I met Todd. And actually, Todd was putting the board together when I met him. And I thought he was just an engineer. You know, as time went on and Todd released these records and it was like Todd is God and all of that, you know, the press just thought he was the B he was David Bowie. OK, yeah. he was it. And um, they would never think that. Why would Todd Rundgren associate with Grand Funk? So that would give me a press story. Right. And I knew because Todd had started, we were both into, Todd and I were really good friends because we both like made videos. And But Todd had sunk all the money he'd made into a video studio up in Woodstock. And he was broke, right? So I said, listen, I'll give you $100,000. You go for 10 days. You'll go to, uh, uh, you'll go up to, uh, you'll go to Miami where it's warm, okay? And you'll have 10 days out of Woodstock. It'll be warm weather. You'll get $100,000, then go back to the cold, right? I didn't tell Andy that I told Todd all this. They had never heard of Todd Rundgren. Grand Funk was very insular. They were uh, Michigan boys, uh, not even, you know, I'm from inner city Detroit. That's a whole lot more sophisticated in my view than Flint. Um, you know, Detroiters didn't think that much of Flint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so uh, anyway, uh, Andy really, he knew how to collect the money, book tours, read contracts, but he didn't know what I knew, you know. And uh, so I said, if you can get them to do that and to agree to Todd to produce it, right, I'm going to put my money into making a film, you know, we're an American band, this is what we'll do. We're gonna take out, because I did this at Electra, I'm gonna take out 30 set, 10 and 30 second TV spots. Nobody was taking out TV spots in music, okay? Um, in uh, B markets, because that was cheap. And what I mean to your listeners who don't know what B markets is, if you're buying in Kansas, you know, if you're buying in cities, not Chicago, but other parts of Chicago, other parts of Illinois, other parts of, you know, you get a lot of bang for your buck. And I just, I knew how much I needed. And I would say to Andy, go, you know, if you can go to Capitol and get this much for marketing, this is what we'll do, blah, 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 blah. So uh, uh, I said to uh, Andy Cavalieri, jump now back after um, they did the Phoenix House uh, special on ABC, I say, if you'll do, if the band will do the following, you know, if you can get these budgets, I will work for you for nothing. I will not, you don't have to pay me a thing. However, you, when you get, and I will get you these things in Billboard, Cashbox, and Record World, a number one single, I am 50% of the management. And you got to remember, this guy thought they've never had a single. Yeah. This girl is saying number one in all three trades. 
it's like, that's, I'm sure he must have thought, that's not going to happen, you know. But when I put my mind to something, um, I'm on it. And uh, I designed the package. I'm a control freak. I did everything. That's all on film. <laughs> oh, I knew Andy told me at some point that Donnie, uh, oh, I know, after it was number one and I was then 50% management, he said, Lynn, I can't, Donnie was always involved in the business, okay? He would meet with Andy about the business, right? And between you and me, I didn't think Donnie was all that smart, okay? You, me, and all the listeners, right? And um, so when Andy said to me, and they were all really chauvinist, real chauvinist. Uh, I was close, Mel was quiet and I was close to him and Mark was fun, but Andy felt he had to tell them that I was the publicist, okay? I was a whole lot more than a publicist, but I don't think Donnie could have handled that. And, um, uh, I would tell Andy, you know, what we were doing. And Andy was happy. He, we were a great team because yeah. I don't really want to talk to those people at Capitol. I don't want to deal with budgets. I don't want to read contracts. There's a, you, it's a team thing. And um, I was that side of it. And it also came to what they would wear on stage, you know, everything. So when it came to the second album, um, I said, okay, I'm going to do a 3D album cover. You know, these are my ideas. Uh, and I said, and we should throw a song in there. I'll talk to Todd about it because Mark always sang amazing. Everybody's doing a brand new dance now. That was Lynn Goldsmith. And if you want to see more of this episode, unedited, uncut, make sure you check it out. All access VIP backstage pass in Patreon. Find a lot of great episodes there. Make sure you subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. And please put your comments down below. We always like to hear from you. Until then, it's only rock and roll, and we like it. Who loves you, baby? We do. 